Here. Dr. Marulo. Here. Dr. Finley here. Dr. Cadaldo. Dr. Bondurant. Here. Mr. Grenier. Grenier is stuck out of the room just for a second. We'll be back. And Mr. D. Boyd, come here. Okay, before we get going any further, I'd like for all of our guests, you know, know most of you, some of you, if y'all would please introduce yourselves again, then so the others can know. Hi, I'm Melanie Talley. I'm the Executive Director for LV and Louisiana Veterinary Medical Association. I'm Joe Donahue. I'm an Assistant Attorney General with the Louisiana Department of Justice. I'm Anna Zarilla, and I'm the CEO at the Louisiana SBCA. I'm Oliver Garn, 19 of school here. Welcome to you all. <laughs> I'm Robert Burns, founder and editor of our uh, video blog, Sound Off Louisiana. Thank you very much for all being in attendance. Appreciate that. Okay. You ever had a chance? You know, we always have, for y'all's information, all the books for our board meeting. We receive those two weeks in advance. So we're able to, as board members, to review everything. We're not sure of something to get clarified so that when we come into these meetings, it's not like we're just trying to see something. So whenever we say something, sometimes you may see us respond pretty quick. It's only because we've reviewed the minutes, we've reviewed these things. So that's where it comes from. Okay. Do I hear a motion to accept the previous minutes? I'll make a motion. Second? Okay. Yes, Larry, I'm sorry. Okay. The Louisiana Board of Veterinary Medicine, being a state regulatory agency within the, Depart the Louisiana Department of Agriculture and Forestry, is a governmental entity whose mandate is to protect the public animals by enforcing its jurisdiction of interpreting and implementing applicable laws and the rules it promulgates regarding the acceptable standard of veterinary care in Louisiana. The board has sole and sovereign authority in Louisiana over the practice of veterinary medicine as granted to it by the legislature. The board members are appointed by the governor and confirmed by the Senate and taken oath of office. The board members in discharge of their duties are also held to the ethical standards of the state government officials. By statute, candidates for the governor's consideration for appointment to the board are made by the state professional association. While a board member may hold general membership in the professional association, he is legally and ethically bound to his oath of office and will discharge his duties without any considerations or goals beyond his lawful obligations on the board. A board member does not represent the interests of the practitioners of veterinary medicine or a professional association while he serves on the board, nor will he use his office to engage in any conduct which may constitute the strength of lawful trade. Thank you. Now we'll go to the minutes. Are there any additions or corrections to them? No, Dr. Marilla has made a motion. motion. Yes. Yeah, I'll, I'll Dr. Godaldo, okay. Dr. Bondurant, second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Jose. Okay, at this time I would like to invite uh, Start with Dr. Melanie Talley to bring us up. I want to claim that. Almost. Yes, doctor. <laughs> Almost. I a lot of doctors. Melanie Talley from the LVMA. Um, so the LVMA, uh, as y'all know, we finished up our winter meeting. We had over, uh, including exhibitors, and I think we had over 600 people at that meeting. Wow. Is that was, one of the highest I've had? Yes. Wow. It was a record breaking. That's cool. Um, it was, we were busting out the scenes, but it was amazing. Um, we had a lot of engagement, a lot of um, attendees, a lot of people. Really great uh, success. So now we're rolling into the legislative session. We're keeping um, it is a fiscal session, so only five bills can be brought forward that are not um, related to budget. And so we're just keeping an eye on that. Um, as you all probably know, at Congress level, they're dealing with the xylazine bill and possibly scheduling that. Um, ABMA did come out recently with a bipartisan bill that they feel comfortable with. So there is a xylazine bill um, here at the state level. So we're hoping to um, talk to them and make sure that they are following the procedure. So that is uh, keeping me busy, just uh, making sure that everything. Does it uh, look like it's going to go forward with the table? Um, at the con uh, Congress Like level? the bill, it, it, you said there's a bipartisan bill. I mean, does yes, it it's going like um, to be scheduled, but there's going to be some stipulations on that. So what are they using it to mix with right now on the street? Fentanyl. Fentanyl. Okay. Yeah. 
So Will Steele, so I mean, the way I read that, Will Steele has been able to use it in our practice. Correct. But, but I'm it, more retired. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just going to be like, I mean, a small animal uses drugs like all you, the time. It's going to be like you Yeah. 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 Kind of so so um, that's what's keeping us busy. Um, and we're excited about, uh, we have board meeting coming up. And so we have a couple of things on the plate. Uh, we're working with the LSU school and some CE opportunities. So a lot going on. Did y'all get good feedback on the meeting? So next year is history report? Yes, next year is history report. At the convention center again? Mm -hmm. It's right. good to see that people are coming out again, you know, yes. and, and wanting to interact. And I think that's so important for our veterans. Is it going to be around about the same time mm -hmm. of the year? Yeah. All right, that concludes my report. Does anybody have any questions? Right on, um, Dr. Uh, Ms. Carilla, if you would like to. Sure. Address the group. Absolutely. Uh, my name is Anna Zorilla, and I'm the CEO of Louisiana SPCA. Um, I've been in this role for 17 years now, and uh, I've uh, enjoyed seeing the evolution of uh, the pet uh, parent programming that you know has has been launched throughout the state of Louisiana, with veterinary care being such an important piece of that. So. Uh, I met Jared a few months ago and um, was really honored to be invited uh, to present at the CAUT um, training. And, you know, I've I done CE before for CAUTs, and it's really been a while since um, I had engaged with that group, but I just wanted to just say, uh, first of all, thank you for uh, inviting me to do that, for giving me the opportunity to share how important um, that work is and how important it is that those uh, licensees are taking care of themselves and their mental health. Um, as we know, that's you know such an important topic in the world of veterinary medicine for those licensees. You know, the impact of euthanasia um, can really affect their mental health. And so um, again, thank you for all that you've Doing. I'm excited to continue partnering with uh, Jared in that program um, as well as with um, LSU Secondary School. So um, thank you all. Thank you. And thank you. I don't know if everybody knows about the CAT program, yes. but um, we brought it to new levels for us um, when we had this past meeting. And you just had your perspective on it was what they need. I mean, you're there. During your presentation, <laughs> she's texting me, going, I love this woman. This is so <laughs> great. I'm so happy we brought her to come. So, yeah, it, it's a different perspective that we primarily, uh, to kind of give you guys an idea, when, you know, we're in that miscellaneous matters a report for the CAT training that we just had in March. Dr. Cataldo does the, the, the meat of it with respect to the, the practical training of, of euthanasia techniques and, and the, the, I guess, written side of it, the, the instructional side of it. In the past, we would touch a little bit on like this stress and, and stress management. Not nearly what what Ms. Anna was able to do as far as really engaging in class and saying, yeah, you're going to deal with some stress. This is how, this is what to expect. And one of the, the outlooks that just was impactful to me Personally, the way that she mentioned it, it's like you, and, and it did several other uh, the participants where they said it was a very, I never thought of it this way as that my job is to be an example. That's a crappy thing to do, you know, but, but her, her emphasis was no, you are, you are um, privileged to allow that animal to have a, a decent, humane, well, Enjoyed for the lack of, but, but th that that end of life was was your privilege to give that uh, that care, and it's a very different perspective on, on something that is a you know difficult act. Yeah, you guys do you do you do you do? appreciate your and high turnover and I uh, just people like you are rare, 
and that is wonderful yeah. that you have the strength to do these things because they're, you know, just euthanizing animals that are old and, no fun. you know, it's no fun. I can't even imagine. So God love you. God bless you. Thank you for all you. Know, you. There, there certainly is plenty of with respect to our C C A T. She's going to be a picture in it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Girl, right? probably, probably more than what she expects. If somebody has her way on the board. <laughs> um, when we were when, and we, when we were seniors at this very school right here, and, and it changed what my perspective on it because we were in the we had a we had a um, horse insured for a lot of money, and this horse was dying, and I was gone, and the insurance company would not let us put that horse down, and I had to sit there. I had to personally sit there and watch that horse go through an agony of death. I was so happy when it finally died because if you ever had to watch an agony of death, oh, it's no fun. I do not like being Dr. Dave. I do not like it. But uh, I think that it is one thing that we do. And, and I didn't do it to one of my little dogs. And I don't treat my dogs. <laughs> I take them to the vet. <laughs> but um, she was old. She couldn't see anymore. She couldn't hear anymore. And she had been with us a long, long time. And I took her to the clinic for them to check her and come that close to putting her down. And I said, no, I'm not going to put her down. Took her home. And I come in from operating on a colic about 2 in the morning. And she was there, and she just eliminated everything on the floor. And I let her out just for a brief moment, and not five minutes. And I had to figure out how to swim. And I learned that I can, that there are times when that needs to be done. Yeah. So, Mr. Oliver, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Dr. Gart, we have saved you from a really a, a good presentation, so we are ready. Well, uh, so first of all, a warm welcome to all of you. It's really great to have you here. Yeah, thanks for having us. Well, you, you're welcome at any time. You, you really are. And this is a bit of a, an old room, but we have chairs very are comfortable. well <laughs> chairs are comfortable. <laughs> we have a great seminar space in the students and faculty. So. That may be where you want to go next time. Uh, I will give you a presentation before a walk around, so I'm going to make it really short and sweet now, but everyone's welcome on the tour uh, after lunch. So if you want to see the school, I mean, it, in some ways it has changed a lot, in other ways it hasn't changed a bit, but you'll all have packets of information just to give you an idea about what we're doing. Infographics, promotional brochure, a new magazine that's just been launched this month, I like it. Uh, it's, it's much more good for purpose, I would say. You can also pronounce the name very easily <laughs> and understand it. So a lot's going on. So if I just give you some cliff, cliff notes now, and then I'll, I'll give you a, a sort of 10 or 15 minute presentation before that, if, you, if that's okay with you. Uh, in each of our missions then for teaching, we're increasing our cohort size. We have a resubmission to the Council on Education, and we should be hearing soon. And we're about to start readying ourselves for that. We're increasing numbers of staff and faculty. That recruitment drive has already started several months ago. Uh, and that goes across all of the clinical specialties. It goes to pre-clinical subjects. And it also includes staff who deliver clinical skills training and surgical training, too. So that's ongoing. But our physical facilities also need to be renovated, namely the auditorium which is going to be starting in July, in other words, in just over a month's time, to make it into a multifunctional, flexible, state-of-the-art classroom on one level. And that will mean bumping out a wall. We'll be able to accommodate up to 250 students. We're going up to a class of 200 to 220, but we want to future-proof a little bit. The years one and two classrooms on the second floor and the surrounding space, the IT space, is all going to be refashioned. So once again, we're going to make one large multifunctional classroom to accommodate up to 250. 
And when I mean flexible, I mean with movable, movable furniture. You can use it for didactic teaching, problem-based learning, small groups, you name it, it'll be fit for purpose. Or guests that come in for, for CE, for example. Um, and we'll have seminar rooms uh, in the adjacent space, and we're putting some more seminar rooms in the library. In addition to that, what you will all remember is called Junior Surgery. Our surgical training center is also being renovated. And that project will start in November of this year. We want to complete all of those projects by, well, August, September of next year so that we can admit the larger class size coming into the, into the class of what it would be, the 2028 class. Um, we've programmed it and we have bold legislative asks going into the legislative fiscal session. We have managed to elevate 10 million of the 18 million that we have in priority five to priority one, and we now need to keep it there. And there's only there's one chance of getting it on and five chances for it to disappear. The House, the Senate, House Committee, Senate Committee, the Conference Committee, and then it goes to the Governor's Office. But I think we've done quite a bit of publicity. I've done a roadshow around Louisiana. I've spoken to legislators, presented to them. We've had literally hundreds in visiting the school over the two years I've been here. And I think everyone knows what we do now and represent, although we will continue that throughout the legislative session. Of course, working with our government relations folks, uh, everything is in lockstep with them. And, uh, and you know, I think we're confident that we, we hopefully will get the funds that we need. You would have noticed we've been, we were recently on the front page of The Advocate, I've done radio shows and so on. The state kindly gave us two million for capital improvements last year, but this is just the beginning. And we will have to put some of our own money into the mix to make it, uh, to make it complete. It's about a $15 million project. Uh, we are undergoing a curriculum redesign, so we voted on that. Today, we're voting on the date of implementation, which I hope knock on wood will be this year, but it certainly won't be made later than next year. This is fabulous. In our healing, in our, in our clinics, we are now fully functional in the Stevenson Pet Clinic for all of the outpatient clinics. We are about to finish renovation of our large animal food animal hospital. We've just recruited a new food animal veterinarian. We continue, and a new instructor in equine uh, ambulatory practice. We continue to build both of those teams, both the equine health and sports performance and food animal medicine. We have five clinicians in food animal uh, practice. Uh, small animal, we're building across the, the whole landscape of specialties, including new ones like dentistry, behavior, and neurology and neurosurgery. And thank you for the good feedback on Dr. Ambersix, who's fabulous. Um, in research, we are recruiting new research faculty, so we have a new uh, full professor in cancer biology coming in May with a fairly large lab and extramural funding. We have an offer out and negotiating with the head of comparative biomedical science, sciences, who's also a very distinguished scientist. Um, and we have two positions open in pathobiological sciences, one for anatomic pathology and the other one, actually two more, for preclinical scientists, tenure track uh, science uh, professors, assistant professors. In our protection, we recognize that our diagnostic lab needs to continue working towards excellence in terms of client and customer care. And we are re envisioning the way operations are conducted. We have reclassified all the positions because they were misclassified and therefore paid too little. So recruitment and retention was always an issue. We're, we're working that out now and consolidating the number of tests that we do to build on what we're very good at and what is revenue generating. Some of the tests are done once in a blue moon. And obviously, we have a state mandate and we, we serve Louisiana first and foremost, but we get samples from everywhere. Uh, so, you know, that, that's ongoing too, and we are no less uh, vigorous in our disaster preparedness and training and being ready to rescue animals and people in the face of disaster, either flooding or hurricanes, whatever. Yeah, so, do a lot's they, going on. The diagnostic lab, do they have a courier service? Like they do, they have a local courier service. Local, and they one don't for, go statewide? Not yet. Um, it's something we're looking into. We, we, we trialed the courier service in New Orleans, and, and 
that wasn't really viable, but certainly local. But we recognize that we need to do a lot more to be uh, competitive with, with, with some of the yeah, commercial banks. More than buying has to. So. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. But, you know, and, and we're trying to capture business all over the place. In other words, asking people, let's do some samples free for you, for example, pathology or immunohistochemistry, and you can see how it compares with your current service. You know, we're being a bit more aggressive and, and market uh, aware. And, and we're changing things to try and meet the needs and exceed the needs of our customers, basically. And they are referring veterinarians, as well as, of course, the state. And the other nice thing is integrated software, you know. Yes. So yeah. that because that's easy when you have Antec or IDEX and you can just download. Uh, it absolutely. Here. Uh, so yeah. it would be nice to support a local, a local lab versus these national labs absolutely. who are also uh, own mean, a lot of corporate practices. You know. Yeah. Yes, and, and we recognize that, and, and we're certainly. I'm absolutely. No, I, you're doing great. Well, I'm really, I was just no, curious no, no, to I'm, make those changes. I think the pace of change needs to go up a bit, but we are absolutely um, working. I like your choice. Yeah. I do. I like it. But you know, lots happening. We'll take you on a tour if you if you like that. Um, you know, in terms of our state interactions, I think they're pretty good. We, uh, you know, I, we, we've reached virtually every senator, every. Group. A representative that you can imagine, um, and we have a veterinary caucus. So, Dr. Bill Wheat, Wayne McMahon, Buddy McMinsey, and uh, well, uh, some of the others too. And we, we have one of our uh, Dean's Advisory Council members as a political lobbyist who's been exceedingly helpful. So, we're working uh, everything we can, and throughout the session, I'll be present. Um, you know, they do various social events, and I want to make sure that the vet school is still in everyone's mind. We are giving every every legislator a packet of information with a QR code to our new anthem video, uh, you know, infographics, promotional brochure, our funding needs, all of that. And I recently testified in front of the Senate Concurrent Resolution 8, which is about recurring appropriations, uh, and that was in front of the Joint Agriculture. Thank you Thank so you. much, Dr. Arnold. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I just want to let the guests know at any point that anyone needs to leave, because we're just continue through our uh, deliberations, that is fine. Okay, financial reports. Jerry. Uh, everything's going smoothly for this year. Uh, for uh, this fiscal year end, uh, to just make some of the, the necessary changes. Uh, as well as an updated budget for the upcoming fiscal year of 24 to also include um, a few changes. Uh, one, the largest one being this uh, new Department of Justice review program. Um, but it'll be, um, as well as um, some additional costs associated with our current software vendor, as well as, um, I guess, number C, the, the thing I'm going to ask you guys about for the online board book. So I'm going to be adjusting that, that final year in budget, um, or not year in budget, the, the final preliminary budget for the upcoming fiscal year. Um, everything's running smoothly. Our bank fees are a little bit higher than what I'd like for our um, credit card processing. And so I'm looking at where well, we currently use authorize.net. So I'm going to look at a couple of other um, um, processing services just to see if there's something up there that's maybe a little bit um, less. But it should, in effect, I mean, the 2.8% the that we are using as a processing fee cuts it very, very close. Um, we, we're, where it gets off is that we had, in the past, the, review, the, the, the renewals kind of extended out um, from the three months. So we had the bulk of everything that happens uh, in July, August, and September. And then we would still have, up until December, January, we would still have another 150 or so that are late renewals that kind of um, offset how much the monthly fee is, where it's either if you reach a certain threshold, if, if, you're, if your 
the expenses reach a certain amount, then we didn't have the monthly fee. Well, if we're under a certain amount of, of processing, our monthly fee is kind of eating up a little bit. So um, I think that there's a couple of options that I can lure to where we're at least um, breaking or coming much closer to that breaking point than where we are now. Uh, we are at, we're 3,000 over what the budget was. Uh, so I budgeted 15,000 for bank fees and we're at 18. Um, so it is a little bit more, but I'm gonna try to get that knocked down so I don't have to change the budget for next year. Other than that, everything's fine. Your motion to accept the financial report. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, investment update. One good thing is that interest rates are improving. That's the only thing. <laughs> That's the only thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's good on, on this side, but not in <laughs> right. um, So we do have uh, two that are going to be, well, really, there, there's several that are going to be maturing um, towards the end of this year and the beginning of next fiscal year. So, June. June 3rd, June 6th, June 17th, we have some one, two, three that are going to be uh, coming up. Uh, we have another one that's coming up in a couple of weeks on the 18th. Um, so, well, in, as you said, we're going to be we're jumping from interest rate, or you know, of, of having an interest rate from under one percent to right at 2, 2.8, uh, 3.5, 4.4. So, some of these larger ones that are coming up in um, April and June, it's you know our, our larger ones, our larger six months where it's 100,000, 171, um, 100, 105. So we'll be getting more from the, the return on those once they do mature and roll over into a, a higher rate. So, okay. That's all. That's also why I'm, the, the offset, the, the the fee for the DOJ. It's not going to really affect our budget terribly much because if we have to, we, we are making it in the, with the interest rate right now. Motion to accept our um, investment review. I'll make the motion. Dr. Finley, second. Okay. Dr. Capaldo, any discussion? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Okay, moving right on into the, the software. All right. So, um, like a month ago, I guess it was, I sent all of you a link to our to a to a proposed site that I am have started using, or I say started. I started using it just as a my OCD keeping track of my to dos and my goals and rulemaking. Um, so the, the the updated sheets that you guys get for the rulemaking that kind of has all the dates. It's laid out in this large timetable of when I need to do certain things along that rulemaking process. And in doing so, looked at it and said, um, is there a way that I can take this and expand it so that we use that for our online, for our online board book to get away from you guys having to um, lug around you know, that huge, huge book. More importantly, um, being a little bit more selfish, but more so because creating those things takes a week, um, and it does a couple because of the time that it takes to create those board books. It it a lot it, it it affects the agenda because I have to kind of close the agenda off so far in advance so that I have it set to be able to make these books. Um, adding in just one item. Takes you know three four hours to to just get it prepared to, to send up to you guys. So with the online book, it's a matter of going, hey, we're we're adding, you know, one week away. We want to add this topic. We can add it. I'll throw it on to the online. Well, let's, so let, let's just go ahead and discuss it now. I'm, yeah. I'm joking. I'll be rotating off this summer. And um, personally, you know, there's two ways to look at it. I like to write, scratch, dig in my book. Um, I guess I'm old school. You know, it's that's just the way I am, mm -hmm. um, Larry, too, because we're older. Um, but 
and Steve. <laughs> Yet we understand the whenever you're dealing with technology, it, it does open up some some pluses from Jared's standpoint. And yet again, you know, it does limit short of us printing this out and then coming to a meeting we would need to have, act, you know, bring our laptops or whatever it is to be able to have it there. Um, so, you know, it's not as much for Jody and my standpoint, because we will be rotating off. Um, I like the books, but I know it does take more time. This will be more of a discussion for you all that are going to be remaining on the board for the next year, two, three, four, whatever. Most of the tablets, though, you can... You can yeah, so the part, part of the... Um, True. And I discussed it when, when, when this thought first came on, whenever I was looking at some actual soft, software that's made for online board books <coughs> that it's just over overpriced and I just didn't see the need for it. My thought was um, having all the board members, instead of you guys having to bring a lap personal laptop, or, or for the most part, not having your personal laptop have anything involved with your Precisely. business. So um, being able, uh, another part that's going to be in the, the budget uh, rewrite or the, the, the updated budget for next fiscal year would be to get all the board members um, and Steve a uh, tablet that can be used. Um, it would just be a Wi-Fi tablet so that you could download it once. Or, you know, as long as you're connected to the Wi-Fi, you can download whatever you need to download, and it's on that tablet. Um, and not one that's a small tablet. I'm looking at ones that are as close to 12, 13 inches as possible so that it's a full page. And you're not having to scroll there. back and forth. Um, and a lot of those tablets these days, like you were just saying, you know, there you, you have the ability um, with um, with our Adobe program, you have the ability where you can open it up, and that's how I send well, you most. Of it. I, I use it mostly with you. Um, anytime I need something signed, well, it's a document that I can send you. You can open it up and you can sign. You can write notes however you want. So. Did you try this? Yes, I tried the one. Yes. Yeah. So did you like it? I like the idea of it. Yep. It's gonna take Thank me. You. It's gonna take me a little while to get used to it. I don't I like, like that you, format I at liked all. having a book in my hand, but I know one of my first ADSB meetings that I ever went to, and y'all know I've been through, mm -hmm. um, that most of the boards were using this, and and you know they were shocked when we said, yeah, yeah we get a book in the mail. So, I mean, I know we're going in this direction. I had a lot of trouble finding. I don't like that format at all. I had a lot of Not trouble just it, finding it. You can't tell, like, what's frustrating is you got to go, okay, go down to this one. You can't keep track of where you've right. been and where you are. You have to go then back. Then you got to click on it. Then you have this little window that opens up, and then you got to scroll up, and then you got to go, oh, there's nothing there. Okay, close that one. Let's go to the next one. Okay. I can flip a page in a second and okay. read it. That so can, mean, I mean, conceptually, like, so, again, I'm still looking for Yeah, if you could software. find one where everything is in a line so you can keep track, because I couldn't remember if I looked at that one before, if I didn't look at that one, where I was, because you have to scroll up, scroll down, scroll here, scroll there, and then half the time there wasn't anything there, or mm -hmm. you have to open the document, then you have to scroll through the document, and then I was all lost on where I was. Okay. So it's not very user-friendly, in my opinion. I love the idea of it, but that program, no. Okay. And the other question is, what is your security going to be to make sure these things aren't happening? Um, it's limited to our domain, and so it's only outside of Steve. I have I've set it so that he has access to it, but it's only the LB, L, lsbvm.org uh, domain that has access to it. Which I think is another push for why we should have notepads and not individual computers, because none of us, all our computers probably have different security software, so if you're downloading this, it would be, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it would be well, something. Well, I mean, it's still going to our personal computers, I guess, because we read it on there, but that's my only other concern is, is it happening? Because this mm -hmm. isn't. Right. So. Right. Um, but it's just, well, I, just part don't of like, takes, I don't like that format. Of, I think oh, I get, no, no, no. That, I that, think we can um, find uh, I think you're right. Because this, this is sort this was a, a it's not built for specifically for that. It's kind of I, I took I adopted how I sort of had it set up for my rulemaking timeline and kind of tried to work See, it. Yeah, why don't you can do this? <laughs> <laughs> you can just it's kind of like reading a book online. Yeah. 
Yeah. Have you talked to other boards about what they use? Uh, yes. Um, there, there are a couple that use, there's a software called uh, Onboard. That's but, the one in Wisconsin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but it, it's, it's difficult. pretty expensive. Oh, okay. And, uh, and I just don't see, yeah, I'm trying to stay, I'm trying to minimize the cost of it. Yeah, no, I another, that. another cost, you know? So, I'll still, I'll still completely look. What, honestly, what takes, and it's, it's, what takes the longest time to build, to put these books together, is creating just the, the yellow, I mean, the green, green or sheets. yellow sheets, because yeah. it's a separate document, then I have to print those out, and then I have to sit and manually build the book. So, it, I mean, I, 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 it fully helps break this up into how the the, the, doc, the separate agenda items that you need to see, but that's honestly what takes the, the longest part is building this one document to include all, to basically take the agenda and expand it so that it has these these pages on it. So, well, it's a work in progress. It's a work in progress. So and, and this was be... the first that I wanted to send send you guys just to see. Yeah, I love the idea. So. Yeah, the concept is there, so we'll we'll yeah, refer right. on this as you get more information, and then once you find one, then we'll look at the tablet aspect of it. Yeah, okay. okay. You know what I'm going to do. I know what you're going to do, Doug. Send it all out. <laughs> We've already had a Department of Justice <laughs> information. I know you. Elizabeth Hall, has there anything she would like to add? No. Uh, yes, sir. Um, Oh, all for me, huh? All <laughs> right. That's your own coffee. That's just for me. We already had a conversation. <laughs> I'm just bringing cream right now. I came. I came in. I was setting up uh, Dr. Stephen Barilla or the only ones here, and a pot, the pot of coffee was just about full. And he came and he, he was at his desk and he came and he, he sat for a second. And he walked back. He goes, "You aren't lying. Half that pot is gone." I'm like, "This is my second cup <laughs> since I've been here." He's like, "I'll go make some more because <laughs> I drink a lot too." <laughs> So. Okay, let's move on to the um, Fintia contract. All right, so um, as you all know, Fintia is the uh, is our software vendor for our uh, for, for our licensing management system, for our uh, license portal for all of our current licensees, uh, for the application portal, and then just from the administrative side of managing uh, all the the applicants and all the licensees. And any time that changes are needed in the system, major changes are needed in the system, we have to propose a, a um, we have to make a proposal to them to make the change. Uh, one of them was not really having access to our data, so if, if the system was working, it was working good enough to be able to do the renewals and to do the applications, but I didn't have access to our data, and. Um, I had access to what's called the analytics, but you have to know how to code. And I haven't coded in SQL in a long time, but you had to actually do right coding to be able to pull reports out. And so what I had them do was create this one data dump. So it, it, that's what I needed you guys' approval for that, um, because it is uh, over the over the $1,000 and by our policy, any that's over a thousand needs a, a board board approval, um, and it was basically to get the the meat of the data that I needed. Um, and what it's happened, what 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 happened is that I can now get our data for our um, monthly updates of licensees that I have to send out to AABSB for any directory requests that we get. Um, I, I didn't have access to do that. And so and now I now I will, and I'm using this as a template now. Now that I see how they were coding in the system, to then take that and say, all right, well, I need a report on this, and I can I can kind of start creating my own reports after having this one, and knowing the foundation of how how they're going about getting the data. So. Um, so is this a one-time thing? You this is a one-time thing. For, for this, it was a one-time thing. Um, there is a second one that's in the packet that I gave you that I don't have access to. Um, because we, with the repeal of the preceptorship, we have to um, adjust. We have to adjust the application portal to take that out of the to take that step out of the application process. Um, and I think that was 
they put it at um, 1250? 1575 for that. Um, the next one is probably going to be at the end of this the coming fiscal year. Mm -hmm. what, at the end of next fiscal year, whenever we repeal, assuming there's no there's no um, objections on the oversight, whenever the letters of recommendation are more formally revealed. Um, so around this time next year, there'll be another proposal to remove that step from the application portal. So every time we make changes to this application portal, we have to pay money? Yes. And this data dump, tell me again, this is so you could access? So I can ac actually pull the data for reporting. So theme, gardening, Dr. Budo, for instance, uh, needed to know for the past five years, any of our, all of our current active licensees who were graduates of LSU in the past five years. Um, so I needed this report to be able to pull. I, need, I needed that coding so that I can pull that report. Are all these things set up like, or weren't you trying to get away from? I am. Okay. I'm looking at some different options. And so you're going to look at other ones that maybe allow you to have access yeah. to your information without having to pay them every time you have yes. to make an adjustment? Yes. I was extremely happy whenever I was at the FARB conference in January. I found one and then I uh, went on an hour long presentation with them. And it was shell shocked to say the least. And they're like, yeah, our contract is $120,000 a year. And it's quarter million to build it. Very that one. And I said, well, you. And so there, some, that a lot of these programs are built for a large, larger boards. Um, or, let me take that back. They're built for states like South Carolina, like Oklahoma, that they have an occupational licensing department. And it's not one administrator per board, it's, an, it's a department that works on six or seven different boards. So my counterpart would have six or seven boards that he or she runs. And so they, they're they built for departments like that where the cost can be kind of. Okay, but I'm, I'm, so maybe I'm simplifying this too much, but if we're paying $2,250 because somebody asked us a question. So I can have access to the report, so. Well, that's what I'm wondering, like how many times are we gonna have to pay this? Right, um, right. That's this, was, this was a large one. That I, that I needed, and I but had it. But it's more than just wanting to know who graduated from LSU. Yeah, 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 yeah. This, this is. I'm I just was that just an why? example? Or that was, was just that? an example. Okay. So, so now, yeah, 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 yeah. Why you don't have access to your own? Right. Language. That's that's what I don't understand. That's, that's what has caused my disgruntledness with them, okay. um, and why I uh, we're, we're up for. That's going to be one of the contracts in May that um, that we're going to be proposing. And that's one of my arguments with them is that it, it is, their tagline is um, created for regulators by regulators. Mm -hmm. And it's not, it's. But then they hold your information and you can't just press a button and say. So hey, if, we approve, if we approve that, how do we not have their information? If we're the ones who approve their licensing, are you asking for like their addresses and all that stuff? Or what, what is it that they have that we can't see? It is a shortcoming in their reporting module. So from from a from a administrative right. standpoint, I can I have access to, to the data where I can pull up things and I can go through the license renewal and do all the acceptances. It's for the the statistics side of things, for the pulling lists <coughs> of people. Um, it, that's one of their huge shortcomings. That and these I, are reports that you are required to hand in a certain. Correct. Individual Correct. or certain organizations. Yes. So how are you doing that right now? Um, there is one report that, there's a couple reports that I had them build early on where it it's uh, pulling a license report, it's pulling an application report, um, but I can't, I can't merge data together. So the, the license, the application report, for instance, um, I can't pull, I can pull base, or what's included in that report is very basic demographics. So if we wanted to, if I wanted to pull statistics out of it, I can. Um, so I do have the ability within our license module, our application module, our renew, renewal module, to pull a, a basic report. And then I, I export it into Excel and then 
do what I need to do, but I can't, it's limited in the amount of, the amount of fields. If you have to pay $2,200 every time you want to do one of those no. searches? No, no, no. This, okay. Yeah, yeah, no, no. This, so this was build it. Yeah, this was just a build cost. And now that I have it, it's... To build what? What he wanted to do. Write the software for The software cost. To, to, what is it? to write this coding so that I had, so that I can pull the reports. Any report you want to pull? Yeah. Or is it, oh, if, you, if you say, okay, I want five reports, these five reports today, the next time the, another question comes up and you have to have those reports, it, are they going to charge again for another? No. No. So this is building the skeleton of it. Now that I have the skeleton, I can kind of mess with the molecules. Okay. So basically $2,200 is giving you access to the information. And then you can take it from there and build your own reports. Correct. And then what's the it was other? equally just as much of, of a, having to have them build the report for me so that I can have a, a master dump of the data. But it's also, it was a learning tool for me where I can see how they're coding the things in their system and go, okay, I can write what I need to write now by, by piggybacking off of this. And then the other thing is just to remove the, that's yeah, that, and that's something that I can't do. Gotcha. Yeah. And Jared. And it's going to take them seven hours to take that away. Oh, I've already given it. $2,250 is a hard number. That's yes. the number. Yes. Okay, that's the motion you will need. Yes. Okay, do I hear a motion to approve $2,250 for the Fintia contract edition? I'll move. I'll second it. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Okay. Move on. Need the, um, um, I oh, guess I'm going to need another one for that removal of the application, the, the removal of the preceptor chef as well. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'll, move that. I'll move that too. I'll second it. I'll just put a room of the discussion. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed so, nay. Okay. But uh, to Dr. Gutado, uh, to, to kind of go on what you're saying, though, I am, yeah, still looking at other software options out there it's just but it sounds like you may be in a situation where either you pay a lot in the beginning or you have these fees that show up right and everyone's so i did find another one um it's a bit more than than what we're currently paying with here and not that we are a small board we don't have a consortium a state consortium where it's four or five boards that are operating under one house um, and trying to work with them to whittle a price down. It's double what we're paying here for the month, but we have actually, it's our system. They, there's no additional back fees of anything. Um, and that they're aware that we're, that I am unhappy with who we currently have, but it's a numbers game as well, and it has to be at a certain number. So they're, I'm in, I'm in talks with them, I just don't know what, how, how well that talk might go. I just can't imagine that it would take an all day to remove. Oh, I know. Oh, I, that's the part that I, that I told them as well. It's like I, I know just enough coding to be dangerous. It might take me all day. But I know dang well that it does, it's not going to take seven it's hours. They have the data hostage, so it's like, well, I mean, that's part of what I don't negotiate. It's part of what I don't like. Yeah. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Was Cynthia out of Canada? Yes. And they have a, a office in. Nebraska or Oklahoma? Oh, Oklahoma now. That's uh, where they have a, uh, an Indian state. Okay. That must have been fairly recently. Yes. A um, few months. Okay. Okay. Well, let's move into our policy, procedures, and rules. So, Jared, bring All us right. up to date on our rule making and where we stand. So, part of where it did, having been with OLRC and not the DAD program, um, this time frame is subject to whenever they meet sometimes. And so that March 30th date that I had given you guys at, uh, and had already emailed out to everybody, it was anticipating that they were going to have a March meeting, um, and they didn't. So, oh wait, sorry, we had a March meeting on the 15th. On the 15th. Um, but March 10th is the, is the publication date for the register so that it would promulgate on, on March 20th, so I have to wait till this month. I had to wait till this month to actual till it's promulgated on April 20th. So 
It will be April 20th, and the pre-subjection will be revoked. Okay. Um, the petition for rule modification, that is uh, what you guys voted on in December. Uh, but that is just language, or uh, not so language, but we're, we're mandated to do this yeah. because we, of where We just had a basic rule about anybody that wanted to change the petition show up at the board office. Basically, mm -hmm. that's all we had. And the new legislation says that we have to have policies and procedures and all that stuff. Will that address that? Yeah. Um, I'm suspecting it will. Hoping that I can get it for this April. Um, publication. It, it's going to depend on when they're meeting next again. When the uh, when the review commission is meeting again. So a lot a lot of the time frame depends on when they're meeting it because I have to file certain days. But um, you know that's that's going along. I we haven't had anybody. <coughs> um, during the public, uh, during the, the, the time for public comment, we didn't have any public comments come in. We're specific to this rulemaking. Uh, we didn't have any public hearing requests. Um, so we're moving on with the next review. is going to be not at its April, not at the review commission's April meeting, but the next meeting is um, May 12th is the next meeting. So that's going to push some things down. But it's in the works. I don't. I don't see that. I mean, it's we're, we're so, we have to do that, so I don't see it not happening. For the next one, then letter of reference. The letter of reference. Uh, so that was submitted to the fiscal office uh, end of February. I got the approval back for them. Uh, so I'm again waiting for this May meeting with the occupational review commission. That's the first meeting. Uh, not in April, like it's in here, but it's the, the mid May. Um, and once we have an assumed approval by them, then we start moving through the Louisiana register process and going through all of the oversight committees. Um, so yeah, very good. The expedition, expedition, expedited licensure for active military and spouses. The work in progress. Yep. There is a, I guess I'll have to wait because I don't have any of the information with it because there was a, a Biden movement. There's a new federal act that, we, that I got to see if it dovetails with it so we have to have this, uh, or if, it, if we even have to make a rule. It says that uh, if you're on, if you can, yeah, yeah. Your, your license elsewhere is good here. It doesn't say we have to issue a license and it, that license is no longer good after your um, your order says expired. Don't represent good standing. Yeah, there's still a lot of there's CE, yeah. they have to have CE, and that sort of thing. But and they are under our jurisdiction. They are. They have to follow our uh, follow our practice act and our, our board rules. But it basically it says, and, it, and it's a, a an addition to a huge package for military people, and just affects us in that one regard. But uh, it basically says your license is good. Mm -hmm. So they don't have to take a state exam? I don't know. That's so for part, example, that's part of where we're, I don't know. it's vague, it's overly vague in some of those areas. It's well, very short, it's a very short provision. Uh, and like I said, it's a big, it's a big package of amendments to the military benefits and stuff like that. Well, I, I don't know how our state exam is, but when I got licensed in Mississippi, I was very glad because there were tons of differences. Right. You know what I mean? So I was yeah. like, well, it doesn't say that we can't, it just says it has to be expedited. So we have an online state exam, and it says that they have to be, they, they agree well, to, language or something like they agree to, they have to, consent to our jurisdiction, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, that's a way of, yeah. I mean, I'm not saying they need to be squeezed, it's just there are differences. That's right, all. right. I mean, it, and it could be, it, it, some states that do have compacts, it's, like, yeah, it, it's no different than, what they're already doing, but you still have to submit an application so we have your information on it. You still have to know whether you, you still have to, you still have to submit proof of valid, of valid licensure, active licensure, or without disciplinary. So we still have to have that documentation. And our state board's online, it takes you know, time for them to, to do it, you know, so. That's the, good. The, yeah, the, the expedition part of it is, we, we've made it pretty dang quick, you know. 
And, and continue to make it quicker by yes. getting rid of the letters of recommendation. Yeah. The statute that requires us to do similar things uh, uh, to, to military people is, is broader than this one was. It extends to like civil defense employees and all kind of things. So it's going to be kind of weird to put and, all these things together. And the Biden one, it's, it, it, it states specifically military or spouses, whereas our state one goes but what we're doing is we're, we're handling um, applications for uh, military people, irrespective of what our rules say, we're handling it in accordance with the statute. Uh, so it's just, it, I've looked at all of the vote boards, nobody has, has done what we're supposed to have done by now. Went to uh, seven or eight boards, uh, they're, they're Act. I mean, the rules, and uh, I don't see it. Don't They're see equally the ball of the sea yeah. because, it, because it touches on so many yeah. different areas, it's, it's hard to get you a grip of it. Well, Steve, we just appreciate all that you do for us. We don't say it enough. Well, in this case, I haven't done it. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me rescind this. <laughs> well, no, but you are doing the review. You are doing the review. <laughs> and I did not. It seems like they want to take the license in here just to know what rules so that they don't get in front of us. Sure. You know, disciplinary actions because they were unknown. I mean, there was two or three things. It's important. Yeah. Every state's different. Mississippi that I was like, oh, damn, well, yeah. 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 Um, This is something I might have to add. So I'm the general counsel for the Geo Science Licensing Board, which is a tiny board. Um, but for us, we decided not to make specific rules. We decided to simply have as our operating procedure that anyone that applies that would fit under the statute can petition to follow the statute. Of I've seen some people on the, just uh, on the on the website say, "Hey, if you're a military person, click here, and we'll talk to you about how you get licensed here." I, I think yeah. I think there's a therapy did that, or somebody did. Uh, I can't remember. Because right I think no one knows really what to do. Like how to craft the rules. Well, there, there's the, there's a federal kind of yeah. mandate, and there's a state mandate that we're trying to work through. I know that engineering had their external counsel and their counsel working on it, but I never saw any results from that. So that was as Dr. Bonnie Woodrow came in, I forgot to introduce her. And Dr. Woodrow, would you like to mention anything in reference to, I know Dr. Garden you know, had some things, but maybe there's something in reference to the students, some of these things you might want to bring forth? I don't have anything off the top of my head, but. Oh, come back. Make up something. I can make up something. <laughs> but not related to oncology. Not oncology related. Okay. I have a question. So For me, talking? Trish? No, no. Oh, oh no, I'm sorry. Oh, no, 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 Hi, Trish. Um, so, for the, for the federal law versus when, just because I was talking to my dad about it, and when the whole abortion law thing got take uh, set back and then they say so each of the states what's the law that says each of the states has to make their own like the federal law can't usurp the state's laws what is that preemption is that what's what a, what con, isn't it a constitutional amendment uh, I'm that, not, i have no idea what you're talking about okay I'm trying, I'm trying so to lean from it what i'm saying question. is is i understand that he passed this as a federal law but if right. the state has a law okay. that says this it's, it's, yeah, I think it's it more restricted. You're talking about, you want a, a principle or a concept uh, that we're is talking about? Is it when no. they. No, 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 no. I think it's, it's different for no private citizens in the military. I'd have to text my dad because we were talking mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. federal government rules. But I understand, but they go under the UCMJ some, and they don't go under. Some matters prefer the state. The state regulations, right? In, in and where some, some, and that's why it was declared unconstitutional. That's why the abortion law was declared unconstitutional it's, because it's it wasn't country. a federal. It wasn't that the federal government should have never had any control over it. It was all the rights to the states. Yeah, it's given reserved to the, the states. Right. It was reserved, reserved to the rights to of the, the right. states. So, the state, so, so. Because this is a federal law, can the states come back and say, okay, that, yeah, that's your federal law, that's but the great, state has That's a this. great question, and it's right, I've seen it raised in connection with this, whether or not. As far as required, required to take the, the test, right. that's what I'm talking about. Right, whether or not the federal action is preemptive or not, or it defers to the to, uh, to state 
I, I don't know. This is like, yeah, it's like well, four to days me, on my calendar. They would have to just go through this little deal, just like you said, because in Louisiana they're going to have different things that they might not know about. Just like we're, yeah, we're you're not, not, you can attest that you have to follow the rules, but. Well, we're in a polyamic law, mm -hmm. not what are all the other. It's an easy adjustment. adjustment. We're for, for the other <laughs> That's patients. Yeah. We're in Louisiana. That sounds like a restrictive license. Um, <laughs> okay, Dr. Boudreaux, anything you would like to present to me? Yeah, I don't, I don't have anything at the moment. She's just having me. Okay, <laughs> well, we appreciate you. Thank you. In history, <laughs> because whenever the dean is <laughs> here, Dr. Boudreaux will have the um, information if somebody has a question. Okay, Jared, keep going. Let's go with um, waiver request. Waiver, the, the protocol for waiver request. So, um, so if you guys remember, it was a few months ago, um, Steve, I, I kind of mentioned that one of the difficulties in getting the packets for the your waiver request uh, from, for potential licensees could be difficult. For instance, there's one there's one guy who's applying. Uh, he's going to be hopefully if he gets everything to me on the May meeting. He's submitting his tax documents. Each one of his tax documents is over 300 pages. And so how I'm getting the tax transcripts from him, but his tax transcripts are still going to be 12 to 20 pages each. And so trying to whittle down the tax information, which is one of the things that you guys, it's not required by rule, but it's just one of the things by policy. You guys say, well, this is what we're, this is the definition that we use, and this is the information that we are using to make sure that they meet it. So tax documents, uh, letters of employment are two of the, the main things, right? Um, which for some of the applicants can just, it's, you know, they're small business owners, they're, they're, they're uh, the way that they might be filing taxes is different. They might have three or four different businesses. Like it could be, it's not an easy, one page, this is how much I make a year kind of thing. Um, so one of the things that I had mentioned to Steve about was doing something similar to a um, uh, um, affidavit type of thing where they're saying, you know, that this is, I'm, uh, along with the um, affidavit, they're saying, I, I'm attesting that I work a minimum of X amount of hours a week. I've been doing this. They give us an option, this, you know, page kind of summary of what's going on with them. If there's any gaps in employment, and then there's a, an affidavit that they would sign, basically attesting the things, and still being able to submit, you know, letters of employment and whatnot. But using that as a way of saying, all right, you're you're putting some skin in the game because if it's found at a certain if we get a disciplinary action. So that's the first thing that you guys can ask for, and if it's not provided, then they have to immediately justify documentation whenever they apply something. So it's just allowing them to put skin, or requiring them to put skin in the game. So those letters of recommendation aren't the letters that say that proof of employment? No. no okay. No, no, no. So, so the affidavit, is it going to be notarized? Yes. Okay. So we're relying on a notary to say, is the notary reviewing this? No, no the, notary, the notary is verifying the, the signature. They're just attesting to this person came before them and said this. That's how we do it. The content. So, so what will they have to submit? Let me ask you that. A. Will they have to submit a diploma? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. They still have to submit. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. no. They, they, they still submit all the, the application, the, the normal application. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's just. It, we, we did it with we, uh, with one person uh, for this May meeting uh, that's coming up. Where she's uh, this would be it would be a great example where she's like, look, I I would be more than happy to get letters of employment for you, but I don't want my current employer to know that I'm looking for another job and moving because that move isn't it, it, it's not guaranteed yet. I'm not sure if I'm moving, so I don't want to let you know. No, I don't I don't yeah, and so I, I talked to Dr. Stevens and said, okay, this is what's going on, and all that I'm asking her to do, she's going to write a letter saying, you know, I attest to this, and then once, if she's licensed, then I'm going to require those documents at, at a later date kind of thing. But it's kind of similar to that where they, there might be some people who's wanting to get licensed and they're not you don't want your employer to know just yet that you're, that you're looking. 
Um, we still haven't done made much movement on it, but it's just a, a thought. I'm doing, I uh, put it on here just as a really reminder of things that we're working on. Here's the deal, but uh, our rules say and that we can require approval of X, Y, and Z. How we do that is within our, that's in our operation. So we don't have to ask for tax return. We don't have to, we could, we could do it in a number of ways, you know, but that's, that's, that's our business. So what we have an option is we don't want to have. Yeah. Because, it's, because it's legal at that point where, you know, they falsified something. If we can come back and we can rescind their license. Or we can, yeah, it, I don't know, there may be a shortcut we could we could do as far as confirming documentation. I, I don't know, we haven't worked that through, yeah. but we were just thinking about the overall affidavit process as being pretty lengthy. Usable, yeah, uh, yeah usable yeah. in lieu of some of this crazy stuff. And it's within our discretion, as long as, as, long as we uh, treat each applicant the same, essentially. How many are there where they're this extensive? How many times do you run into that? Um, with the, like that extensive? Income. Because, I mean, oh, most income. people have a W-2 or, a, you know, a, I mean, most do most people it's, have 20 pages of tax documents? Well, a couple times. It's, well, relief, it's, yeah, it's, it's with relief. Relief, relief that's just generic. Uh, very very yeah. 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 Okay. Um, and so it's a way of saying, all right, you, you, you tell us, you write and tell your story. And you're just testing that this information, you know, the board can go and verify this if something, you know, at any point. And we're, we're taking you for your word, but you're, you're signing this legal, you're making it a legal attestation, attestation that what you're submitting, you know, you, we're gonna, we can hold you accountable. So are you what? just trying to do this for the people who have? Just for waivers. Just for what? Just, just for like NAVLI waivers or VTE waivers. Well, you have to prove full-time employment or part-time employment, whatever. Okay. And, and having but you're not saying just for these people season. with 400 different jobs and no, no, for any, anybody who, for who's anybody. requesting a waiver of an Adler or BT&E. Okay. There could be triggers within that affidavit too. If, if you see a, like it's 45 employers or something, then you can kind of, okay, never mind. But if it's just one or two, you might want to get their job. Oh, because a lot of these, we look at those tax documents when you can tell that they weren't full time. You know what I mean? Like, right. even though they're submitting us, submitting it to us, we use They're not attesting though that they were full time. They're not telling you that you were, they were full time. They're just like, here are my employer records. So <laughs> it's like, oh, that's full time. Right. It's putting but a burden of proof on it. It's kind of switching the, switching the, uh, the burden. So since you have an extra lawyer in the room who's going to be bossy, <laughs> I mean, so you could also add to that a statement that they're doing this under penalty of perjury. Yeah, yeah, and absolutely. Then, you know, that way it, it makes yeah, that you fear words, words in there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We well, want to be trusted at your word, and all this is putting that you're giving your word. <laughs> okay, we've got a lot of business to do. Yeah, yeah, wait, 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 no, no, I just that, that's my only question. Like, you're taking away a lot of information, but yeah. I mean. At what point would you verify it? Yeah. Only if they have a problem? Are we just going to say it's an honor system? Yeah, I know. It's, it's a work of work. Yeah. It's okay. just an application. It's just a presentation. Mm -hmm. like a we could have blanks <laughs> where we could have blanks where <laughs> <number, laughs> we could name the employer and have them at this time how many they work for how many hours they work a week for this. Okay. We could do, learn our you can instead of just having all this. <laughs> I, I get it. Yeah. I get it. I mean, I know we've talked about getting rid of some of the paperwork for a long I'll look, time. I'm gonna look, look at work. other people, other boards, how they do this. That's a good plan. Great plan. So. Oh, I like that. Okay. Any, any moral, moral Neville here? Okay, moving right on. Complaint protocol for non licensees practicing in, uh, practicing in medicine in the state. So, here's my dilemma. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, so, we have two options. Let's say somebody in the people in the industry without license. We've got two options. Um, one is we can go at the administrative route. Between them, we are the judges. We decide we run the trial, that sort of thing. Um, and that's an administrative remedy. We can still impose the same uh, administrative fines, but we can also file suit in district court. And when we file suit in district court, that gives us 
uh, and we're successful, that gives us the benefit of injunctive relief where the court says don't do this again ever. And if they violate that, they're in contempt of court. Uh, that's not available with an administrative remedy, and nor is, not that we, we've never made any criminal referrals, but, in, uh, but if, if you, that, that's part of the, the state procedure, if we wanted to do that, we could call a DA and see if they were interested in taking on something like this. Uh, so so we're, we're, as you know, we've come across people that I investigate, um, just do things, mainly social media research to see if they're advertising their services. Equine dentistry is a good is a good deal, a good example. Um, I, I, we we need to work on how which direction y'all want to go pre meeting, and maybe not on a case by case basis, but for some sort of general direction. Of sending a cease and desist letter is not mandatory. Mandatory. You don't have to do that pre civil suit, uh, but it also has consequences. You know, so you can, but that is with the with this new right. review part. This, that those advisory letters, cease and desist letters, yeah. are part of their review. So, what are our two options again? Because I'm confused. Okay. Our, our so, let's say so we get we get word that somebody in Opelousas is, is practicing equine dentistry without a license. They're not working for a vet. Um, they have no. They're practicing veterinary medicine without a license. We get word of that. I do, I do an investigation. There's two routes we can take. Um, I can usually, usually we let them go long, long enough for me to come to court and get the specific directions. Uh, what we've done, our, our first big one is the one that we know about. And we went to district court, uh, filed a suit in district court, that's plaintiff. Uh, and we asked for the fines that are available to us under the statute. Practice Act, not our rules, but the Practice Act. And we asked for injunctive relief. So that's one option. So that can stop doing it. Yes. Okay. That's, that's depending on, depending on the uh, response by their counsel, that can be very expensive and very time consuming. Okay. And it's, it's just a regular, ordinary action. It's appeal to the, whatever circuit they, we got to sue them there where they are. In their in their parish of, of domicile, so we're we're playing we're playing on somebody else's court, and um, it it can be depending on the circumstances, the money involved usually, which is why we chose that route in our particular case because it was a lot going on. Okay, so we've got that route. We've got another option where we send them subpoena. We get notice. We send them subpoenas. They come for a hearing here. We know it's a gotcha. formal hearing, and we preside. We got, we, I, I, I prosecute. I, whatever witnesses we have, uh, including their their, their testimony, uh, that's what, and we can levy similar fines. We cannot make them never do it again. I mean, well, we don't have that injunctive relief. So, but it's at least expensive. I don't know if you guys want me to handle this on a case by case basis, yes. or if you okay. Yes, okay. <laughs> I think we'd all agree on that. I mean, it's, it's too, every case okay. is so, so different. Steve. Okay, so when okay, so then there's the second problem of that. When we get word of that, do I do I need permission to send the cease and desist letter? Because it has consequences. Sure, y'all want to talk about the evidence that we have. Uh, before sentence and cease and desist, that's usually preliminary to a civil suit. It can be preliminary to what to bring them in. I think we've had several response to cease and desist. They go, didn't know, and they went and got hired by a vet. Or, okay, I'll get rid of my ultrasound and I won't confirm pregnancy because I'm a groomer. That that sort of thing. So well, normally we have heard here at this <laughs> okay. board and we have already given a general consensus, I think, at that point. You know where we're coming from on the okay. cease and desist. Okay, well, then I, will, I think I'll wait, I'll wait for voice for permission. permission. And it may be 60 yeah. days. And it protects you, you know, we all are okay. going to be in three minutes. That's away. good. We don't need a policy anymore. We'll just do no. that. No. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay, moving right on. CE. Hi, uh, 
in the packet. Yes. Okay. Five, ten minutes. Thank you. Not online. <laughs> so there's a couple different points that, that I wanted to bring this up with you with you about. Uh, one of the things that you guys have said in the past is that you you still um, still want to have that the, the maximum number or to limit the number of online hours. Um, and the way that our current rules define that maximum is sort of antiquated and it just need, I, I, I was looking at a better way of, of making the definition. So what you see in that packet that I had given you um, was that in person is actually defined as the contact participation. Contact participation is defined as physical attendance at a seminar, conferences, workshops, kind of thing. So the way that I that would the way that this possible rule change would would uh, the way that this possible rule change is looked at is that instead of setting the maximum for for online, it's setting the minimum number for in person and it's doing so by referring to the to the definition of contact participation. So anytime anyone calls and says, well, um, is this considered online? Well, anything that doesn't fit into that definition of contact participation is online. Um, so that's what that possible change would be. Um, but then I also wanted to let you guys know, I, I sent out uh, I guess post-COVID, or th this was the past uh, couple of weeks, uh, sent out to see what other states are doing with respect to their CD and with allowing, well, without restricting, allowing all their CD to be done in whatever methodology they want. If they're race approved. If they're race approved. Um, or, or approved by that, by that board. So it's still approved CD, it's just the methodology isn't uh, isn't the concern for these boards. And 71% of them that, that replied, you know, 21 replied, 15 of them don't have a restriction anymore. So they basically took what their, what their COVID changes were, similar to us, and they went down and made it permanent. Um, so some of them can have everything online. 71% of, 71%. Half the states, out of, well, almost half of the states replied, and 71% of them Methodology doesn't really be concerned. Um, now, something to point out. I talked to Dr. Will Week, Bill, Will, uh, Bill Week, and he had a question, and it was it was for him, where he said, uh, "So I went to a conference, and he said um, I was physically there at the conference. It was during COVID, and nine out of the ten presenters were being done by Zoom. So I'm physically there, but I'm still doing no differently than what. So how would that would that be considered? I said, well. If you're physically at the conference, he goes, but I wasn't with that person. Right. So if you're looking at it from that standpoint, that to and so even if you physically go, like from, from a standpoint of tracking whether it's online or if you go to a conference and five of those presentations, there's no way on our reporting. You know, what we're doing it, well, there's not a good way to track that. And then no. you're taking somebody's word at it. So it's sort of with the changes that are still staying in place from you know, post COVID. A lot of the boards are getting away from it, so I want you to be aware of what some of the other boards were doing and get, see, get, get a little bit of guidance. Not for this year because it's, it's, it's done, it's done, Re renewals are about to start. But, but it's something future, we need to discuss as a board and begin to um, try to see what's going to be the cause. Just like in veterinary school, you, yeah. you know, so much is online, but you don't have to be in the classroom. And so it's a uh, um, that's the way it is, but I think what you mentioned. We had decided earlier that we wanted to keep the uh, contact participation for various reasons. Well, we did too. Yeah. But even from the standpoint of like from the LBMA, from conferences and so forth, if you have everything as online, and I know <clears throat> I think conferences because I like the camaraderie, I like to see people, and I like the touch feel. But I think as a newer generation comes along, a lot of them are so um, technologically advanced in the form that everything online is fine. And so as you want to attend a conference, there won't be the numbers there. Now, let's see how well you're going to do on your vendors. You know, 
they're, they're going to say, why do I want to come to a conference? You know, you know, most of the people are watching it online. Now, how has Florida done? Because Florida was one of the very first states that required that at the end of everything, you had to get approval. I mean, at that, when you walked into that room, you came out, you had to have something checked off on that said, I attended this whole program, I mean, or this one hour CE at the NABC meeting, or whatever they want to call it. There were one of those things that didn't reply. They did not. Wow. Yeah, Texas, you got to swipe a car or something. Every time you come out of that seminar, not just say because. And, well, and that, that's where it, it's, it's beyond the scope of what our what we're asking for them to report that's on, on the conferences. So using Dr. Weeks as an example, if you went to that conference and they just said, well, here's your certificate of completion, you did three mm -hmm. hours. Or what we do, if, if LBMA is approved, for instance, well, if there's 40 different um, 40 different presentations, you guys would submit that uh, uh, type participation form, or whatever, saying that these were the 20, I went to these eight. And it's kind it's of self It's all honor system. Yeah. So you don't know if people are actually attending. I will tell y'all this. I scheduled the ones for um, for the Northeast Association, and this has been a hardest year to get sponsors um, and to get people to come and talk because there's you know most of these big companies are offering so many online hours that they don't have to pay for the speakers to come in anymore. So it is getting harder um, to get them scheduled. Uh, but I think that you're going to have a certain population of people who just like to attend in-person meetings. I do. I love going to meetings. Uh, and I like having that come out of me, too. Well, you but, can't ask questions online like no. you can. And you know how I love to ask questions. Come on. I'll just tell you, I don't care whether it's online or in-person. You know, like, it wouldn't matter to me what the rules state. I, I would still go to them, you know. But I think you're right. This newer generation, we're never going to see. With this, the past two or three months specifically, we've had a lot of people. Well, she's on the agenda a little bit below, um, similar to, to Lolly, where it's uh, two two of them is a husband and wife. They live in Alaska, and they're like, "There's no in person around. There's no people around for 200 miles. Right. You know, so I have to fly all the way down. You know, it's going to cost me a couple of grand to get in in hours." It does so. So, well, yeah, but still. If you're equine practitioners, Dr. Finley says, come on. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, uh, that was my point in, in giving both of these. Was one, if you guys wanted to keep you, the, the contact the way you want it, the, I think this is a cleaner way, especially from just an explanation standpoint, that it's our, in person is already defined by contact participation. And so it helps to eliminate some of that. Um, need for for extra information because what's online right now might change very likely will change in five years so okay we will need a motion what if y'all because what we let's put it on the table then we'll discuss it more the verbiage that uh, jerry has put into the ce that what does contact participation mean physical attendance at seminars lectures conferences or workshops that's it. It's it's a more now, Steve. This is just a clarification, so that it's not ambiguous, correct? So that we'll know what contact participation. Right. Okay. So you have to physically be there. That's what. Yeah. That's the way I read. Even if they're on the screen. Yes. Okay. Okay. So right now, if you're well, somewhere and the speaker's on the screen, it's considered in person. If he is right now. Mm -hmm. okay. If it's interactive. It doesn't, the screen, like in Dr. Weeks' situation, it doesn't matter if he's oh. physically there, okay. you know, it's in person. That. And that, that's what he was questioning. He's like, but it's not, because then why can't, why can't I sit in, in my office yeah. then and watch it that's if right. I'm getting in person? I've misunderstood that. Remember, we, we were called upon to change that rule, and we said, no, we don't want to change that, and our rationale was that it would, it would foster uh, good relations within the profession, and there are vendor presentations where there are people, live people gathered that are very beneficial. If I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, those are the two mm -hmm. points that we used to, uh, yeah. so yes. we, we were going, not going to keep the COVID protocol in place, we're going to go back to the old way. 
But then technology has changed so much, and the way we define online is like videotape. You know, it, it's it's very outdated. So we it's either you define online a whole lot more, more detailed, or you define uh, in 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 person contact participation participation and let everything else uh, that's approved go on the online part. So that's kind of our dilemma and that's why we're talking about it. Jerry, you had a question? No, I was just, wasn't a question, but just kind of an example. Like I have a, a Lunch and Learn seminar with my staff from a food company. And it was basically like all my staff, myself, my other doctors, and there was a doctor I don't know where she was, mm -hmm. but we had it pulled up on the computer, speakers on, and it was a live, interactive, mm -hmm. staff members talked to her, she answered questions and all that kind of stuff like that. So I mean, it's kind of, now that internet, Wi-Fi, I mean, and you're right, they don't have to pay, that company didn't have to pay for her to come to Louisiana or wherever and talk to all these clinics. She can sit at her office. So. But that's good. different. Yeah. That is different from sitting here and just watching a lecture and taking a test on it. Sure. To me, because in that Some case. Can, 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 ask, can, ask, can I ask y'all? Because y'all do CE, you know, not just for us, and I'm like in other states. How how much of any of the online stuff that y'all do now is pre-recorded or, or just watching something I versus being? Online. You don't know. Do it the problem is it's very very like some of it's shouldn't even be seen. Yeah. Like it's race approved and don't even take a quiz or nothing. And some of it, very interactive, very good, high level stuff. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I've also been to conferences that were terrible. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and yeah, I was there, but it's like, oh, I'm waste my Understanding the speaker. Sometimes that may be a phenomenal presentation, but they may be speaking in a um, dialect that, um, even though it's English, you cannot discern. And I've gotten up and walked out and gone to a different one. It, it's, but yet, if you're online, you know, it can be the same thing there, too. Dr. Boudreaux, I know y'all experience that. And um, I don't know, what would be your comment? If you well, had any suggestions? I sit on the, um, I'm the program chair for the ACVIM Onco Forum. And so, it is moving even more virtual now. But it's still very much a of the states that have, you know, where everything can be online. I would be interested to know at their state conferences and meetings, have they noticed, and maybe you can find this out, Melanie. A reduction uh, in what is the reduction in the attendance and, yes. and how does that affect the whole state organization, which which could be detrimental in the long run when you don't have the funds because that's where Yeah, no, they definitely have seen decreases in attendance. Okay. But I mean that's that's just something that's that's what's that's the future. But I see this last year that y'all had this, such a high attendance type in people, well, okay, this is the South, you know, and people like, I mean, just as a group, these tends to be the much more social people, I think. And so I know when you had the uh, first conference after COVID, like all the comments I heard were, oh my gosh, it's so good to see everybody, and everybody wanted to get out, and it was so nice that we could do it again, and I think this is still, this year was probably still a follow-up to that because people actually get out, were able to get out and go and listen to speakers and see their, you know, see their colleagues, huh? <laughs> well, and I think uh, for conferences, again, uh, I'm a bit biased, but um, Relationship. 
relationships, finding out new vendors, new products out there that are out there. We are to call sales out every single year. We are always bringing in new vendors, new, um, new products. So. Well said. Um, well said. I don't know, just, we've had a similar discussion at the Geoscience Board um, because it's the same kind of concept, but there's a difference between, you know, are you learning material that you could read? And they, they do it a little differently. But one, we didn't do this, but we discussed offline that what if we did CE as one requirement and then professional interaction as a separate requirement? Well, that's a concept uh, that I never um, thought about. There's yeah. a lot of the boards that have way more, um, and I'm sorry, Michelle, mm -hmm. to cut you off. They, they, well, that was it. It's, um, you know, out of their 20 hours, three sh need to be drug related, four need to be this way, three need to be on here, five need, and it's subject specific uh, uh, breakdown like that, which is chaotic, I guess you could say in a way, but you know, they, that, that's more what they're looking at. They're not looking at the methodology, they're, they're looking at the substance of mm -hmm. what, what that CD is. Well, that's something that this board, the LVMA, will all be looking at in the future. I know it's, it's the, well, the future was yesterday. Yeah. But I mean, it's just kind of forewarning that I do believe that's going to be something that will be Soon. Well, those so. saying yesterday's gone, tomorrow may never come, all we have is today. Mm -hmm. So we got to look at our so much for, um, right, for that. Okay, so if you'd like a motion on the, the wording, please say. Yeah, if you, if, you, if you guys want to stay with, with your current um, um, <coughs> philosophy or decision to, to keep that 10 hour split, then yeah, the, a motion to accept this rule, this change to better define. Well, we could put the, that situation. Or 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 that could know. be on next on in two months at our next meeting. Right. Um, that could be something that we can discuss at that time, and it's not going to change right now the contact participation. Yeah. Yeah. So let's yeah. hold that until okay. two months, and then let's discuss the the online in you know versus. Participation. Let's just defer to that time. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Z zero declaratory statements. That's good. Okay. Now into the. In, any other thing, um, Jerry? Before we go into the queries. Nope. Okay. Okay, Steve. Yes, sir. It's on your docket. Okay. I'll be back. Animal control law. Please give me an answer to this, or we need to get an answer to this before you okay. ask me that. Okay, so this is the one I did refer to the board for a decision as opposed to me giving a decision, you know, ratifying or modifying. Um, basically, uh, what this is coming down to is whether animal control microchipping is allowed for non surrendered. Can they go out and shop animals. and start microchipping animals? If just random. Yeah, the control officer. Yeah. That's the question. Yeah, our rule says, mm -hmm. no. Our rule says it has to be done if they're under, under the supervision or by a Unless it is animals that are within the. If it is animals with, that are, if it's part of their official duties mm -hmm. for animal control, then they are exempted from the practice of, the, the definition of the practice of veterinary medicine. Well, we know with some of this that's coming about is people that want to do some moonlighting, want to try to help their, their district, their area, maybe they're deficient in veterinarians, and um, um, it's, it's, it's in lieu of well how so the people in my area are going to be able to get their animals. Microchip is not a veterinarian from XYZ. These people don't own a car, but they own an animal. Um, and they, they won't let them put the animals on the bus unless they're a... a, a um, No, no, no. Yeah. Just microchip. And, and I would say that some states uh, exclude microchipping as the practice of the U.S. We tell them not to do that. And for reasons we've discussed, that things can go wrong with microchipping. Sure they can. Uh, and, but I don't know. So uh, I thought I was comfortable with briefing that once it gets to an animal owned by the public, then our rules apply and not the exception to the definition of the practice. Anybody have any discussion as we're moving this forward? This is just deeper than my dog got picked up by animal control sure. and now I'm going to pick it up 
do they want me to microchip it while no. it's there? This is like these animal control officers want to set up shop and do the microchips and get paid for it. No, probably what's happened is some of these they're trying to do like community outreach, but uh, yes. clinics okay. and stuff. That's what like, that's what oh, I love. Well, it's yeah, not yeah, just microchip too. Yeah. Yeah, she, she talks about the intakes uh, yeah. for okay. evacuations and that sort of thing. Have they wanted to add that to the to the intake, uh, yeah. even knowing that it was a publicly owned uh, Renee mm -hmm. is the head of El Sorry, or used to be on, she still is. Anyway, she is still, yeah, so this she, these questions come from uh, evacuation. Uh, evacuation. Would they almost come in? So I'm assuming that's the question is can they, when they get these dogs, even though they're not under control, animal control, they're just, they're public dogs. Until proven otherwise. But you don't know who they are. Right. Can yes. they microchip them? And so. You need that on But what I don't understand is typically there is. There is one of them. A bed on premises. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. That's, that was not her question. So, so yeah. are you going to reply to her? Yes, I will. I, will. Okay. I will. It was specifically on animal control officers. <coughs> okay. All right, well, let's leave it there. Okay. I'm let's sorry, go around. Can we authorize prescriptions via phone or fax to another pharmacy? Yeah, by, by, the way, to by the way, that same that last question had been answered prior back in I think it was the assumption or something. Conclusion was the same. And I think in one of our last meetings in reference to the phones and so forth, we said you can write a prescription and give that to the owner. So do we need to say any more on that? Uh, I'm sorry. Y'all have uh, before, Doc, before you go to the e authorized uh, to the okay. authorized authorization of prescriptions in your packet. You have um, the, the, that I gave y'all. You have that number two for the general agenda. Um, it's in the, the packet that you have right here, Doc. Yeah. Sorry about that. The government contract for care of publicly owned animals is the one that I'm referring to. Maybe I'm not. Uh, here it is. Government. Okay, I'm sorry. There it is. Okay. We're talking about the new governmental contract. Oh, governmental contract. The new, the new ordinance. Thing? Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah, this is the one you called me about. Right. 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 Yeah. Right. Uh, okay. So, on that one, uh, we got. A call, I got a call from city parish attorney. Uh, saying that a proposed ordinance would, for East Baton Rouge Parish, would uh, change the scope of duties for their contract veterinarian. Okay, so right now the contract veterinarian by, by ordinance is only allowed to provide treatment for publicly owned animals, excuse, for uh, captured animals that are in, in the, uh, the province of the, of the animal control people. Their contract, uh, Will, they propose this change in their ordinance which would extend those duties to uh, allow treatment of publicly owned animals. Right. Okay. So the issue becomes uh, they wanted me to comment on it. I don't know what you're com what you what you're talking about. They said, well we had a, there's a lot of tete -a -tete in the past about where the rubber meets the road and it's, it's a division line between publicly owned and, and uh, captured animals and what, what they what was required for treatment. And this is a veterinarian, okay. So this is a veterinarian and what it, to me, what it comes down to is can a veterinarian work for a public entity, for a governmental entity? Government. Um, and I, I can find, I said, time out, you know, I got, let me talk to, to the board about this. I don't, I don't know, I don't know any prohibition that says that each Baton Rouge can't not hire a veterinarian to work for the public. I mean, it's, it's, it's competing against private enterprise, but that happens all the time. I mean, it's, it's always a, a lot of competitions between public and, and private enterprises. Um, but the question is, do our rules prohibit that? I can't find a basis to say that. Okay. I just don't go to antitrust. Eh? What's that like? Mm -hmm. That'll be OLP, whatever they are. <laughs> and so, I, you know, I, I said they want they were going to put that on an agenda for uh, introduction of the bill a few days ago. And I said, no, 
Uh, no, it was today, actually, today. And I said, no, uh, I'm not going to give you any kind of opinion uh, that says that without letting you buy the board. And so are they going to charge for that? Yes. And who's going to get the money? Here? Okay, I talked to the councilman. He, 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 this was his spin on it. We've got one veterinarian in North Texas who works one day a week. Uh, we give out pet food in North Baton Rouge as outreach, and the lines are around the corner. That the community is underserved and uh, is not does not have the financial wherewithal to take their vet to uh, to take to their their animals to uh, ordinary private practices. We want to subsidize that. We want to provide low cost veterinary care for routine services. And what's the closest low cost veterinary care to them? It'll be on Greenville Springs. Yeah. Associated so Veterinary Services yeah. here in Baton Rouge. Yeah. Which is? Craig Albert. Um, no, no, like how it's, far it's, are we it's, talking it's, about? Mm -hmm. Well, it can vary depending on what part of the parish you're in. Um, but, but that's you're talking about present, a few miles. That's the present purpose. That can expand. Once, once, there's two issues. What they intend to do may not be where they end up. And what is our basis for saying that veterinarian is breaking our rules? Well, I don't my, know about the, this with the public, but I know when I was in the military <clears throat> and we had appropriated funds, we could not compete we cannot inhibit the private practitioners because, and they got very upset when we would overstep our bounds because we were getting appropriated funds and government subsidies and then we were turning around and taking care of publicly owned, they were military right. animals, right. but we couldn't do it. There was a limitation in how much we could do because, and it depended on who your colonel was, how much you got to do. Mine, let me do a lot. But um, I didn't know if there was anything in the laws that... I cannot find any prohibition that would, would stop. What, what we're talking about basically <coughs> coming down to government... Computers. But where does the money go? Money always has to be accounted for. So if they're making this money, does the money go back into the general fund? Where, do, where does the money go that that's they're making? Not, do they that's, pay that's, that's not my game. The issue is whether or not we can regulate that veterinary, whether we can sanction that veterinarian for doing that. Here, let me throw you another um, proposal on that. As we're to protect the public <coughs> and look at from the public standpoint, when you have, say, a governmental veterinarian, <coughs> there's nothing that says that governmental veterinarian on a Saturday can't go work for Dr. Bondurant, and Dr. Bondurant pays him or her on that day as a relief veterinarian to come in. Yeah, but he's paying for all exactly. Right. There, so there's no regulations that says that. So then you say, okay, what regulations do we say that if a person goes out that does not have an official domicile, they don't have, say, like, do you have your any kind of a licensing from from your? Um, well, they may have their um, Louisiana yeah, pharmacy license. Nice. You don't have a license to practice medical really? medicine. Like I don't see how there is a regulation. It's just the only basically comes down to the ownership of the of the practice, and we have already said it doesn't it doesn't have to be in another veterinary it could be a medical corporation. It doesn't specifically say go or in this case entity. the parish of East Baton Rouge. Right? right. Our rules, if you remember, our rules were that only a veterinarian could own a practice to buy the veterinary. Providing services that was changed. Yes. So now we look at the license. Who owns it? It really doesn't matter anymore. Although our rules uh, talks about partnership and corporations and organizations, it doesn't specifically say governmental entities. But I don't see the difference. I, I don't see the difference. Are they going to be under our purview? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. That's Even what I'm saying. But this proposed employee. answer is yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. We. Even this, yes, because the uh, because sure. they, yes, because <laughs> the, 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 the owned animals is involved. 
Require for both of the governmental umbrella. Now that that means though, if they do surgery, they gotta have all the equipment. Right. That's yeah. required in for uh, any veterinarian that even at Walmart. Every everything. Every, if you you know you got it's just like a private practice, and they would be treated just like a private practice. Now, do they get to you? Uh, they get to use all their. The DEA goes with the vet or the building. The location. So well. The, you mean the, that's the their property. The that's their property. You have to have a locale. So yeah, the DEA. Yeah. I'm just wondering, like, can they use all the controlled drugs and all that on? If somebody's going to be responsible. We're for secondary that. regulators. I know we are, but I'm just. But no, I don't know how it's going to work. I got no clue. But I imagine they would have their own DEA registration. They're getting they're getting it for the publicly owned animal. I mean, the uh, captured animals yeah. now anyway. So what's the concern here? The concern, the concern is, is that they're they going to shut down other small animal clinics because they're competing. So they're going to have to be like buses right. and, and, and they're going to go out. But right now they only have one contract. Well, I was about to say, I can't imagine that they're going to get that many veterinarians that want to do this, that they're going to have enough staff to. But, but gonna, anyway, but we don't know gonna, what's happening in 10 years. But the they're going to have to bring the animal to that shelter. Right. If they're going to have all the stuff they have well, to have, well, currently, though. well, no, you can be a mobile clinic if you're if you're associated with a clinic, uh, a, cl a, a properly equipped, defined clinic. You can have a mobile unit, and then you you know you can do all this stuff. That, but it's no different than what a regular veterinarian. Steve, if you're doing anything other than that, yeah, but if you're doing anything other than a vaccination clinic, because those occur yeah. all over the place, different corners and different places. If you begin to go into the line of, of surgical care, sewing up wounds, doing all those things, you have to have a veterinary hospital that you have made arrangements with for emergencies like and everything else. Yes. That's for the publics. That's what that I was comes. asking. Me. So yeah. when I got down to the bottom line, I said, well, my objections or my reservations are basically a matter of public policy, not our regulation. Exactly. So I called. That's it. Melanie? <laughs> Do y'all have an interest in participating in this we, issue? Um, yeah, we've reached out to the councilman. We're, we're hopefully going to have some discussions. Because again, it, it is definitely a, a competition. And, uh, what, and hearing kind of your intention with key voice to you, it's kind of what we're looking like. What What is the intention of this? But at the end of the day, I mean, it definitely opens the door mm -hmm. for direct competition. It could change the business model. Right? It could. It was enough pause for me to say, no, I'm not going to give you an opinion and then have you all ratify, but to come to you to get your feedback about that for. Uh, when, when are we going to have, uh, they don't even have to take the dog or the cat, and we just look at it online and give them something. That's, that's, that's on the agenda. That's two different things, but yeah. uh -huh. that's two different things. <laughs> it's not on the Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, now, this, these would be, got, this contract event <laughs> area, because the ordinance allows them to, the, the issue is, can we, is there a regulatory, regulatory prohibition about them doing that? And I can find no legal reason to do that. And this is what we have to go by, is um, Steve's legal opinion. Right, right. absolutely. Okay. And so, anybody have any further discussion? We give you the approval to just what you told us. Along with parameters we discussed, they're governed just like any other method. Exactly. Because it's very simple. To make what they can delegate, yep. they can't delegate to an animal control officer what only an RDT can do. They can't delegate, you know, that's for the same rules. They can't have a substandard clinic for surgery. They can't do all of it. They have a mobile unit. It's got to be associated with a period. Yeah, okay. okay. That's period. Period. That's, that's what I thought. It will, it will, it will keep it into the, the vaccination status only, the way I see it. Which is, if the rabies vaccine in a lot of these dogs is extremely important. You know, only the veterinarian can do that anyway. Correct. Okay. Even I will do that. Yes, sir. <laughs> if they just hold the dog and show me where it's sticking, I will do that. If it doesn't weigh 800 to 1,200 pounds, you don't know how to handle it. No. <laughs> and race. Yes, race. Okay. <laughs> Moving right on to the. Let's see if I've gotten that before I get it. Can a faculty license yeah, yeah. prescribed yeah, for personal pet? Did we do the first one? No, we didn't do the, the backup one. Did I? Can yeah. we authorize prescriptions? Yep. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I want to allowed to authorize prescriptions uh, for our current client over the phone or via fax to them. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. We said, write them a yeah. prescription, they said to them. Yeah. The issue usually is revert, reversed. Do we have to? This one said, are we allowed to? And of course you are. So. Oh, you do? Mail it to the owner and let them be the responsible for faxing the device and all that stuff. Yeah. 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 Okay, now, can faculty license prescribe for their own personal debt? This is a repeat. Uh, we've had this before. And uh, it's long, it, a faculty licensee can do it as long as it's associated with their employment. If it's a, if that's an associated deal, then yeah, yeah, yeah. They can bring their own head in here. Exactly. Yeah. And it's to totally legal. Mm -hmm. But it has to be connected to the employment of the school. You understand that? Yeah. Okay. I don't prescribe anything for mine anyway, except part one prevention. Otherwise, it's somebody else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It would be embarrassing if you don't have a whole. Okay. But I do have a whole. Yeah, uh, osteopath <laughs> practicing in Louisiana. Yeah, we got two business, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they were. They were. This was a foreign per person. Yeah, that was how long ago was that? Hello. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. They have good for me. They have good for me. Yes, Google. yes. So I, I just. You apologize. I lost a bunch of practice queries somewhere in the shuffle, and Mr. O. C. Lee here <laughs> said, "Hey, we've got all these to answer." So I went. I'm just. Take a couple of days in April of 2021. Yes. <laughs> I apologize. There's a database for that. <laughs> <laughs> you would apologize to it? So basically, every couple of months I go, something like, look, I'm not, not demanding, but just, this is where we are. <laughs> and he's like, all right, I'm going to knock some of these out. Okay, so I knocked some of these out. That's what, these are all queer. Steve, all let, me, let me um, let this all know that as our attorney, these queries, you know, we, we try to have them for the veterinary profession, but yet we're kind of, he kind of, we open it up to the, to the public for things that they have questions about, and yet it's, it's more of a, of a, um, of a community service type thing that he's given, he, he's not necessarily given an opinion, in a sense he is, but he's relying on us as a board to back him up on things that aren't just black and white. So, um, and that and these queries can take all of his time. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what, that's, that's why we pass. We have a policy. And so we about, try to restrict it that. as much to the veterinarian versus just the general public. That I think don't. that's wonderful. I, I think it's a really good way to let the public participate. Well, and there's yeah. we have an online form that they fill out too. So it's where it's oftentimes they don't, but it basically says what statutes or rules are you are, are you questioning. Here's a link to the practice act, and at least gives them. Hopefully, they'll go and read through some of them. And say, well, I can't figure out that. Sometimes, and then they, sometimes they just give them citations. So this is where you go. Now, don't worry, so look at these rules. That's why it's taken two years for him to reply to this. Dr. Cooley started the database. Dr. Cooley chided me about spending a whole lot of time asking exactly the questions. Yeah, right. You know, there's and a lot of people have a lot of good questions, but yet say, you know, we are bored. We have to take care of them of what we're commissioned to do. Right. So basically okay. this is one I did choose to answer even though it's from the general public because the answer was clear but I yes. said I wanted to know how they could practice their practice here and I cited them to the uh, alternative therapy rules, doctor's treatment rules. Now, next one, can lead CAET maintain um, any federal legend non-controlled substances? That's what it was. I know because well because I didn't know this was written that they can't do it. So the idea of having a lead CAT at a facility is because you don't have a licensed veterinarian. Yes, but but what they can maintain is strictly state is only what they can order and and, and maintain it are limited to specific drugs. So that they could. So they Why do you can, want to order an antibiotics and Okay, all but I mean, stuff? Mm -hmm. but you're not saying no to the xylazine. No, no, no. no, no, no. So it's the three. It's limited in It's, it's, a, it's no, the ACE, the xylazine, yeah, you don't the Dumbass order, order and ones that are in the park or okay. sell them. Right. Okay. Not low. Okay. Well, when they put, they put 
xylazine is their example, and I was like, they have to have that. You know, right. like that's their that's about control and everything. Yeah. So that's where my confusion was, like, why are they asking specifically about xylazine? Well, yeah, yeah. They have to be able to order that because that's their approval. I know the question was confusing. Okay. Okay. Going to what you just said, Dr. Monroe. If that xylazine is like a, if there's a federal thing on that, how does how we would have that affect our our CAG. If it if it becomes a controlled substance, then oh, it's it, then they're going to be only limited to ACE and Domator. Okay. That that, that is strength. approved right now. Right. Okay. In, under what we teach them and what our rules say. Okay. So we'd be even restricting further that. The, the, correct. The okay. xylazine, if it gets controlled, will move into the telazol ketamine category, gotcha. which would only be for the. So leads. if the DEA allowed you. Allowed that license and the board of pharmacy allowed that license. We'd have to change the statute, would have to be changed. Mm -hmm. Not a board of rules, the statute would have to be changed for what uh, a lead CAT can order and uh, make that correct. These are already approved. Okay, Z if if xylazine becomes controlled, then it would the, the regular CAT certificate would not allow them to use that, right. So it wouldn't right. change anything. But there are controlled the substances lead. they can use. Only the leads can have right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. So it would basically just change it from the regular CATs using it to the... So there would be a need for uh, collaboration with the DEA to get, if that's what they're using now. There's no reason they should. They just have, should have to um, follow the DEA. Uh, it depends on how they schedule you know, like they'll schedule weird things. Like, for example, I don't think you can order a gallon of strong iodine now without a DEA license because they're using it to make meth. But you can order a pint. See what I'm saying? So it just depends on how they schedule it. We'll just have to watch it though because right. it is going to change this a lot. How does, that, how does that operate? Okay, so so say. And I'm thinking from like a from the legislature. If that's statutory. If the, if the Fed said you know, Zalazine becomes that scheduled and it's no longer going to be one of those three, and that happens August, well, we have to do legis like that supersedes us, and we, we would still have to, the next legislative cycle, have to have a bill sponsored in order to change the Because our, our rule is derived from the Process Act, okay. which, which defines what they can use. Okay. Sodium can and it's a few things. So still be following the, the Federal mandate while we go through the legislative stuff to change well, the statute. Where it's classified is that's the fifth business, yeah. but if we've got to get it, in, if we need to get it into the hands of the, um, um, the lead CAT to distribute for animal control purposes, sedation, that's what, not sedation, but uh, <laughs> then, then it's got to be a change in the practice side. Okay. And but they couldn't do it until that change is made in our practice. Not our, our license. That, that was that was my question of like that time gap yeah, that time. Even the lead couldn't get it. Okay. The lead the lead the lead can get it. The lead has full DEA. Like it would be that that's what the change would be. It would be moved from what the CAETs are allowed to use to what the lead is allowed to, okay. to, to order and dispense. To Steve, you answered that. Okay. I'm sorry, I just misunderstood it because they used it was, it was, it was, it was, it was the example. Opposed. Okay, let's go right into what limitations are there for non veterinarian ultra sonographers? That's, that's defined in the It sure is. That's that's that was easy, 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 easy. You know, can remote, um, let me see, um, veterinary client patient relationship be established and yep. drugs prescribed remotely? Filling 90 day supply of controlled drugs. Not that's a, that's not, yeah, that's the, yeah. Outside that's of our baby, yeah. regulation. Yeah. Disposition of controlled substance logs. Five years, right? Yeah. I'm sorry. Five years? Yeah. Uh, actually, yeah. That's also a mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I that too. Yeah. Well, I told them what exactly they had to make, what we are required to, for them to keep and how long to keep it. So, but that's not what they that's what here comes an interesting one, legality of telehealth or telemedicine. Now, 
Yeah, he is, he's, if the patient is in state and he's out of state, he, he's practicing veterinary medicine without a license and he deals with the patient. Uh, we don't allow that. And it is a license. Be licensed. Yeah. <coughs> he was asking if it was legal or not. So kind of Okay. Legal difference between a registered tech versus an assistant. That's all in the practice. That's in the practice act. Is it fine? Yeah. We, we, we've asked this several times. We don't have a list of things they can do and cannot do. It has to be gleaned from the entirety of our rules. We have a list of things that neither one of them can do. And there's some things that the RBT can be trained to do that, that a, a, a non-licensee, a layperson, Cannot be trained to do, uh, but, but this is this is nothing new, and I don't have a problem answering. It. There's some of that that there's some queries that are just in fact repeat one, yeah. and that's one of them that can, yeah. consistently comes up. Over that's why and over. that's yeah. why I've been answered one time. Okay, needing help regarding THC, CBD products for animals. Oh, yeah. Well, we're going to be yeah. continuing to no, get this one again. Yeah. Same thing. I just I just repeated our last. So, uh, can oh, I ask no, you a question there. just to decrease your and this compilation of the materials, we see this every every quarter, every single one. There's a question about rabies, there's a question about bull pirates, there's a question, and if you answer them, if, if we've answered Our it before, Our policy is, you have to I put can it in here. answer if it's, if it's clear or sub, if it's clear or uh, has been the issue of prior board decision, right. but y'all have to verify. We still have to say it. Yeah. I, I would, just since we've answered before. You could, if you wanted to. I would suggest that if you wanted to, you could do this in global application. You could do it all as a group of That's answer what we're doing the groups. end of all of these. Yeah, right. that, that's, that's not, not that's what No, that's what, what I'm saying it does. is it's, it's the same question. It's the same question yeah. every meeting. I, it's the still, my policy says, my, you still have I'm to a bring lawyer, it I'm not a vet, okay. so y'all have to, it's I didn't know if, if we answered it last time, we have to go through it. I'm sorry. But when it, when it also in, the, in our database, that, that we continually pile that in if we do have. I thought that was the purpose is, of the database and these queries and the, and the better record keeping. The key here is making people go look at the database. Right. If, but if you go read it, well, not the the question. Well, well, they, don't have, well, they don't have access to that. Oh, so I thought no. gonna, you have frequently yes. asked questions, though, right? No, but you can pull no, them down. No, I thought the part, when I heard. It's in the making. In the when I first started on this board, I thought, because y'all were just starting to do this and trying to get a compilation of FAQs or these queries, and then that way you could have a database where you could say, oh, same question, boop, there you go, here's your, here's your canned answer. What, what Jared has done is, is give me, I can do a word search for all the past board minutes. Okay. The problem is that until a few years ago, they, the board minutes would say, a query was asked of da 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 da. We discussed it, and Mr. Tom Noah responded as discussed without answering the question in the minutes. Correct. So if I can find them, then I know that I have the authority to. If it's not clear to me, if I, I if I find a, prior, a a similar issue already answered, I have the authority to answer it provisionally. If I don't if I don't know and I can't find out from prior decision. I don't answer it. Y'all answer it. Okay. Or and, and we keep that. if it's time sensitive, if it's time sensitive and there's not been answered before, and I don't know the answer, I'm not sure about it. I go to the chair. If it's time, and then we we get together. He gives me the authority to answer it again provisionally. Okay. So every opinion that comes from me is answered provisionally, okay. and y'all have to ratify or answer it. Okay. So it's it's similar to what you, I, I know what you're saying. Yeah. It's similar to the um, the listing of the new licensees, where even though it's been an answer that's been answered before, there could be a little bit of a nuance to it, and it's best to have you guys ratify it as a. So 100 people ask this question. He has to answer it 100 times. And when I first got but I can cut and paste. My right. impression of the easier. database <laughs> was to have this cut and paste. So this oh, but well, we still have to. No. That's what I was. Thinking. I thought it was on the website. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I thought that the whole purpose now, of doing it is sort of getting it more it's you know, information. Every, every board is different. Y'all might, might look at what a board did 10 years ago and go, that ain't right. Okay. 
if, 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 I, if I've answered it because of a prior Good board point. decision, thank you. you think no, no. I know. Ah, thank you for that suggestion. You could easily say oh, no. Yeah, we're going to change. Okay. Sorry. Okay. That's what we'll this. We have um, five more items in these queries, and we'll break for lunch. So, Dr. Marilla, what he does it. These answers are available to the public after the board meeting is ratified. So it, the reason what's helpful in that database is that it gives this, some historical information for Steve and I and to you guys. But it's also he's a, he's able to improve what the minutes from what the minutes used to be where you know decision was made as discussed but, and nothing. So now that you know, what you, even though you're seeing it over and over. If somebody goes to our minutes and looks up our minutes, they can see, well, yep, it was answered, it was answered, it was answered, and approved by the board. Okay. Okay. Plus, I mean, y'all have a chance to review this in advance. That's why we get the book. The OOK. The online book is still a book. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Uh, number 12, Ravi catheters, pre anesthetic blood work required for small animal surgeries. I actually found a prior uh, opinion on this. This is one of my ex-clients, a nice guy from Texas. He's moved here now. Uh, I have him get water at East Feliciana Parish. There you go. His new property. Uh, and, and, of course, the pre anesthetic blood work is can be rejected by the client. I suggest that we inform, inform, uh, inform the consent for rejection. And uh, the IG is, of course, on a case by case basis using the best professional judgment on standard of care, well, which is what well. an average veterinarian would do in similar or exact circumstances. So that was that one. I didn't have a problem with that one at all. Precisely. Okay. Responsibility involved for volunteer of services. Volunteering your services does not exculpate you from the provisions of, the, uh, of our rules. Getting paid doesn't matter if you're a veterinarian, you got you to call it on practice now. I'm the civil court is waiting. <laughs> okay. Oh, look at uh, that. What can a veterinary assistant in Argentina <laughs> legally do in Louisiana? <laughs> okay, we, we beat that one down a yeah. lot. What prescriptions, writing prescriptions for clients? Yep, there we go. In there, done that. And last, uh, offering in home euthanasia and related control. On drug storage regulations. And a lot of jurisdictions have, have a bite of that apple. Uh, and uh, that I answered the best I could. Be. Basically, I think I gave them contact numbers and everything. Take mm -hmm. that up with the DEA. And Board of the CDC. Okay, now, do we have a motion before us to approve the. Okay, oh, yeah, no, 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 that's what I was about to say. Okay. A motion to approve the query responses that Steve has received and we have agreed upon. Seconded. Okay. Motion made and seconded. Any discussions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Okay. Lunch time, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, we reached the halfway mark. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Are your board meetings as fun? Sorry. All in favor? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Officially, yeah. Alright, new licenses and certificates. Review, review any um I will say this also, that CAT class was the largest that we've had. It was thirty one people. Really? I think it was packed. And I will give kudos to Jared on bringing that well we're gonna get to it at we'll get well, I'll save what I was gonna okay, say. Sorry, sorry. Okay, sorry, sorry. Okay. Okay, we'll get through all of these and we'll do um, approval on all of these at the end. That's okay. Um, or do you want to do each one individual? For, Let's just go on. For what? The well, matters. Yeah, oh. on all the miscellaneous really, I mean, really, the only thing that needs to, the, the, the new license is the only thing that's, everything else is just up Just so that we agree with them as a board to have it in writing that, yeah, we saw it, we approved it. Um, that you didn't leave something out of the board meeting by accident. Okay. Uh, that purpose we we have reviewed. So we'll do them at the end. Okay. 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 Uh, Let's go on to the um, renewals. Application else? The statistics. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, yeah. That from the last board or the last time that I. The recordings of things from the last board meetings, January, 
mid-January to mid-March. Uh, have 39 new applications submitted, 36 have been uh, 36 approved. Um, complaints, as you guys well know, they kind of go up and down a little bit, but we've had uh, some more cases that have been coming in. We are getting more cases, more complaints uh, filed, or formal complaints filed for uh, non-licensees practicing without a license. Um, so that's that's kind of coming up a bit more. Um, is it all recorded and stuff? Is it all mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I, I did. Coming. Yeah, I did. I spoke to um, Tim, Dr. Tim Armstrong, love him to death. He uh, he said that one of the things that he had seen with the newsletter that we we post a newsletter. Class, unfortunately, one more about that. So he, he was happy to see that more, uh, and I let him know we're getting more complaints coming in for that, and then the board is you know, starting to look at that more seriously, and he, he was happy to hear that. I've had several people that called me and commented on the newsletter, and with, uh, they were shocked by what they were seeing there, and they Just following instructions, and that's how you get your license. Just letting them know what it is that the board is uh, 
Um, so I'll start working on that presentation um, for next year and change it up a bit more. But. Well, you know, so many of them don't realize that what a consumer protection agency does. Right. Yeah. You know, they think this is a board that's, that's oh, we're going to stand behind every, every veterinarian. And no, that's not our purpose. I not at all. Good, even it's a misnomer. They, they don't realize that what's going to protect the public. You know, association but, versus. Yeah. Yeah. And I think yeah, it is. Be good. You can run this by the dean or whoever. It'd be good to even have like a scab, on, almost like a liaison, on, you know, or something. Mm -hmm. you know, where so they different students like to have a, a normal rotation of mm -hmm. different students that come to them. They all yeah. do. Yeah. They all they have one of those. Yeah. 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 Doesn't need to be club Right. Well, we all have periodical years. I've had veterinarians say, you know, what, what is y'all's board doing? They're not doing anything. For the veterinarian, you know, and I say, yes, yes, it is. It's it's for the public. You know, we're not here. We're not. We don't represent the, the state veterinary association. We represent the people of Louisiana. And um, so, whenever we have these, um, uh, we have to give opinions on veterinarians. It's what would a um, a standard veterinary practice do in this case? What is the, the level of care that is acceptable? If it's not, then I'm sorry. Yeah, right. That's what we get the rule on. Anytime you do those orientations, please stress that the number one reason we see these cases come through is a lack of communication. Always. Oh, yeah, so Pick up the phone and talk to people or get in front of them and talk to them. And medical record will make or break. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Board profile survey. So this is just some more FYI that ABMA, AAVSB, uh, sends out an annual. Uh, survey of different boards just so that we can all get a get a comparison of where we are. So I just wanted to give you all that information. It was actually I think well I didn't think I gave you all the full report in that online version, but it was like 70 close to 70 pages, so I didn't want to print that all out. It was just FYI. But uh, yeah. Okay, we were out into the C A E T training course. Gary, you want to say anything there? Best one we've had so far. Uh, we had in March. Uh, I will say kudos to Darren for um, maybe not redesigning it, but reorganizing it and getting members of the board policy to come and speak. Uh, Anna Zerla. Good Felix. Uh, and Felix and Dr. Yeah. Hammonds were there. Um, it was just so much informative information. I think it went from like a really boring class to very informative. Uh, Added something to it. Absolutely. Did the DEA uh, show up? The DEA did no, not yeah. show up, but we have some contacts with the DEA now, and so hopefully they will come because I've been having to teach that part, and I. <laughs> and I always look to the board of pharmacy people and like correct me if I'm wrong, but they they have been very helpful, and we have. Um, clarified a lot of things. It's it's when you start dealing with animal control officers, who then become CAETs. There's a lot of crossover. I mean, animal control officers have all the drugs, you know, it, it, and, then, and then there's a crossover. So they've been having these drugs the whole time, access to these controlled drugs the whole time, and then they become a CAET and they're not supposed to have access to those drugs. It, so we've had a lot of issues that we've had to just work through and clarify with them and bringing these other people in to do these presentations uh, just has changed it a lot. I think, you know, Felix and Dr. Hammond's talking to them and, you know, just informing them that there's people out there they can talk to. It's a depressing job <laughs> and there's a high turnover, you know, and so when you get people like Anna and, and Dr. Hammond's and all them involved, it just gives them a whole new outlook on it. So it was a very good, it was a very good meeting. How many? 30, 30, 30, 30, 31, 32? 30, we had 34 that signed up. Two of them didn't. Um, they, they, left, they left the job before they before they got to the class, and one no show. Well, I, well, I still haven't heard. But everybody who came passed the test this time, and um, we were in Hammond. We didn't get to see them. So that's Someone cool. decided not to come see us. He was too busy growing It was at your office. <laughs> Well, I didn't 
Tom might have been skiing like <laughs> But anyway, it was very good, and I'm glad that Jared. <laughs> I think I thought that on the proposal of the CE hours, I thought we had already. Had, uh, that was for the LVMA. This is for our. Oh shoot! My bad. I didn't change anything. Oh, I see. I did, yeah, yeah, sorry, you sorry, sorry. There's more veterinary medicine here I see now. Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll, so the green page has LVMA still. Yeah, that's what happened. Okay, All okay. Right. Yeah, so um, kind of doing the same thing that, that Melanie had, had uh, proposed for the, the LVMA. Um, and so I basically took that exact same proposal. I think this is important to get people. And then this, is, this counts as in person? Yeah. Oh yeah. We're learning from ourselves. Do we get to this? I need some. Um, yeah. Maximum of yeah. six. So you get a max of six. Just by being on the board. I think this is important because Absolutely. you're asking people to volunteer their days and their time. Yeah. And this younger generation is going to have to give them something. So. Well, well, this is, well, this isn't just for board members. This is for anybody. Any anybody. Licensee. Oh, license. oh. Any you license. too. Dr. Trish, you no. get a max of six. Larry getting all so giddy over here. Next year, because you're getting a credit card. I'm going to go meet and meet. This is nice. Like we it. might have more attendance. Like you it. need some, you need three more hours. Come Does here. it? Do we have to qualify? How long they have to stay? Uh, I pushed that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's, if you're in the minutes, you're good. Yeah. It's not. We don't do that. We don't do that for a regular meeting. No. Well, I just think, I mean, sometimes eight, nine, four. It could be a seven, eight hour meeting sometimes. This becomes active if we vote on it ASAP. Oh, y'all want y'all want y'all hours for the I'm day. Oh, we got five. We already have nine LVMA. I'm moved to accept this. Motion has been second. made. Second. Oh, yeah. Any discussion? All as in favor? Uh, as it's written. It's about time. Yeah. Okay, now, how do we get our CE certificates for number We made them to the board. <laughs> um, how, you're going to have them ready and until the main meeting. <laughs> we'll say, okay, and yeah, um, six, like six hours for board attendance. That's why Dr. Finley made sure he was at least two board meetings right. a year. Mm -hmm. You sure? No. <laughs> Them six hours, I'm not going to have to worry about. <laughs> okay. No preceptor shift issue. Isn't this nice? Okay. Now we're getting ready to go into executive okay. session. And need a motion to Yeah, to go out a no, motion no, 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 no. to go to accept. Yeah, to, yeah. We need a motion to accept all of the previous issues that we discussed under miscellaneous items. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed nay. Okay. We have a motion to go into executive session. We also need a recitation of the reasons for the executive session. And this particular agenda is to discuss the character, professional competence, and physical health of a uh, licensee uh, strategy and negotiations for pending litigation and uh, uh, concerning investigative proceedings and misconduct. Okay. I'll move. Second. And so, any discussion? All in favor? That actually needs to be a roll call vote. Okay. We'll go roll call. Just, just. Go ahead and dot the I and cross the T. It needs to be a roll call vote. Yeah. We'll get it all done. Okay. Dr. Bentley, if you would pull a roll call on this one. And we have to call out the names so we can say. Dr. Bondurant. Aye. Dr. Cadalvo. Aye. Dr. Marilla. Dr. Marilla. Aye. Dr. Stevens. Yes. And Dr. Kennedy. Yes. And yourself. Okay. Okay. 